Any new brand needs to be able to make a statement, especially when it comes to playing in the world of luxury SUVs. And that's exactly why this car could be a success story. It's the all-new Genesis GV80 luxury SUV, which will compete with the likes of the BMW X5, Mercedes GLE and Range Rover Sport when it gets to Australia midway through 2020. It's a big SUV with the choice of five or seven seats available, and when it launches, there'll be petrol and diesel engine options as well. So, is it any good? Well, we've come to its home country of Korea to find out. But before I tell you more about the Genesis GV80, make sure if you're watching on YouTube to hit subscribe, hit like, share this video with your friends, and also hit the bell notification icon so you can stay up to date with all our latest video content. Now, let me show you the size of this Genesis GV80 because I've said it's big, but let me show you in person. This is a substantial vehicle, and that's important because if it weren't so large, it might not be able to pull off all its styling as well as it does. But as it is, it demands your attention. Just have a look at the size of the huge grille across the front, and also those twin headlights, which aren't just important to identify a GV80, they'll be important for the rest of the Genesis range as it expands. It's not intimidatingly large though, and unlike some of its rivals, it's got some lines that help hunker it down to the road, like these ones that run above the rear haunch. I think it looks pretty sporty. The rear end also features those distinctive twin light elements, which definitely help you identify the Genesis GV80 if you couldn't already tell what it was from the massive badge on the back. Now, it is a large SUV, so that means it should have large amounts of practicality. Let's check out the boot and see what we've got inside. So this is a seven seat model and as it is right now, it's in five seat layout and there's 727 litres of cargo capacity, which is pretty good. And you can put those seats up using these electric toggles on the side. Let me show you. Just pull that down. So it's a little bit slow and you might wish for a manual latch instead, but now I should show you what the third row space is like. Space in the third row is adequate if you've got young kids, but taller adults like me, I'm six foot tall, will find that the headroom is pretty limited, and so is the foot room and knee room with this seat set at its first click back. So maybe not the Kia Carnival of luxury SUVs, but that's not going to matter to too many people. Now, let's check out the second row. Second row space. Okay, so this seat is set for someone about my height, and I don't have huge amounts of space for what is a large luxury SUV. Well, that's because this seat is set for me to sit behind myself. So, if I slide it back, I've actually got adequate space back here. It's not class leading, I wouldn't think, but it's definitely spacious enough, especially considering there's a big panoramic roof in this car as well. And all the practicalities are taken care of, of course. You've got bottle holders in the doors, you've got a flip down armrest, which is a little bit tight because this car is very new, with cup holders as well. You've got rear climate control in this particular car. There's USB points, there's power points, there's map pockets. It's got pretty much everything you're going to need if you're looking for a luxury SUV. Now, front seat. It's luxurious because it is a luxury SUV. There are some beautiful materials, some lovely finishes in this car, like this green quilted leather. I love green. I don't think there's enough green in the world of cars. And this is beautiful, this leather. Also, there's some brown elements to this cabin and nice wood trim. And I guess the thing is you can personalize and customize exactly what you want, as we saw at the Genesis Gangnam Studio. You should be seeing a bit of footage of some of the options you've got there now. But let me just describe this design. It's very simple, very broad, and very easy to get used to. Some of the other luxury SUVs out there do almost take a month of reading a manual for you to figure out everything and how to operate everything. But this one is a little bit simpler. I guess that comes from the Hyundai jeans that hide underneath the Genesis skin. And there's nice elements like this 
big digital instrument cluster in front of the driver which has a 3D effect look to it as well and that's really quite nice. It is very BMW-ish though in some of its presentation and then there's this big 14 and a half inch screen on top of the dashboard which is both well very clear and very easy to use but it's got touch screen capability and you can also use this rotary dial thing. I would use the touch screen a lot more than this because this does take a little bit of learning even though I said that most of it's very intuitive. It does have handwriting and gesture control elements to this controller and it does work very well. There's a lot of information in this screen and a lot of weird little things like this ambient sound element. So it's set on the open air cafe right now. Wow, I can picture myself with a piccolo right now. Anyway, it might not have the bling factor that you get in the Mercedes-Benz GLE and it might not be as traditional as a BMW X5, but I really, really like it. I think it's easy to use. The quality is great. And of course, it's got all the practicality bits. You've got a pair of cup holders. You've got beautiful woodwork with nice storage down here. And the way these close, it's very elegant. I guess that's part of this whole Genesis theme. Now, should we go for a drive? Before we hit the road, you know I'd love to tell you how much the Genesis GV80 range is going to cost, but for Australia, that info isn't available just yet. Given its competitors though, we'd suggest a starting price around the $75,000 mark, with the range topping out probably in six-figure territory. Plus, it will continue to be the luxury ownership benchmark in Australia, with Genesis offering a five-year warranty and free servicing for the same period. Keep an eye on the Cars Guide site for more info as it comes to hand. Now, let me tell you what it's like to drive. The GV80 models that we're driving here in Korea are the diesel engine versions because the petrol ones aren't out yet. But we will get the choice of two petrols and this diesel, which is an all new engine. It's an inline six cylinder diesel engine with competitive levels of power and torque. And it's also competitive when it comes to refinement and the way that the engine behaves. If you blindfolded a German executive and plonked them in the passenger seat, well, you wouldn't put them in the driver's seat because they'd be blindfolded, put them in the passenger seat, they'd probably think that they were in a BMW or an Audi because this engine is so refined, so luxurious and effortless in the way that it delivers its power that it could fool even the most convinced person that they have to buy German. You might be thinking, a diesel engine, wow, that's futuristic and forward thinking. Yeah, I thought the same thing too. There is no hybrid, there's no plug-in hybrid, and there's no electric version of the GV80 just yet. Uh, and apparently, according to Genesis, there is no plans for hybrid versions of this vehicle, which is disappointing because it's a new car. It should also debut new drivetrain technology. But Genesis says instead, it'll go straight to electric at some point in the future. But back to the GV80, because it's got a very smooth eight-speed automatic transmission, which does make good use of the diesel engine's torque. And it feels really quite nice to drive. As for the way the GV80 handles and drives, well, the Australian local tuning team will have to do their job as they always do with the steering and the suspension. But I will say this, the vehicles we've been driving have been sitting on 22 inch rims with very low profile tires. And the suspension has done a really good job of making it comfortable enough in the cabin. I'm actually being pretty surprised. There are other cars with 22s in this segment which don't ride anywhere near as good as this and it doesn't even have air suspension. Part of the reason it rides so well is that there's a camera that reads the road ahead and will adapt the damping to suit what's coming up. So a pothole or a speed bump will be ironed out more effectively. We'll see what challenge that presents to the Australian engineers when we finally get to drive it in Australia later in 2020. More than just a statement in style, the Genesis GV80 is also big on substance. We can't wait to see how Genesis Australia positions this model because we 
think it's going to be value packed and very competitive when it comes to its rivals in the large SUV class. Tell us what you think in the comments section below and if you're watching on YouTube don't forget to hit subscribe, hit like and share this video with your friends.